you then eventually signed for for Mansfield Town in in July 2015 after a, a, a trial period. How did how did that move come about? Um, well, to be honest, it was it was kind of out of the blue. Like, um, I don't, do you know Exodus? Do you, do you, I, can't, I can't even pronounce his last name. I was at Peterborough with with Exodus. Gio Garhan, yeah. I don't even know how to say it. He's got a really yeah. long throw. You might remember yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he he kind of obviously he was at Mansfield the season before, and he reached out to Mickey Moore, who who obviously reached out to me, and said, uh, "Do you fancy coming down and and training with us?" So I was like, "Okay, no no worries." So I think I I went. I, I played the game on a Saturday because I think there was a way on their tour. And then they came back for the game on a Saturday. So I played the game on a Saturday and then trained the following week and then signed at the end of that week. So, yeah, it, it was, it was uh, like I said, a bit out of the blue, but obviously it was an opportunity to to play in the league again. And after not really playing too much, I was kind of in and out the season before at Torquay in the conference. So it was a bit of a, a strange one because obviously the season before I was playing the season and the following season, I'm, I'm kind of in and out. Yeah. So obviously to have the opportunity to go back into the league and and Mansfield only being an hour up the road, it's not it's not the worst move in the world. And obviously an opportunity to, like I said, play in the league again. Yeah, you played forty games during that during that first season, considering yeah. you were just someone that coming along to, to, to have a trial to get to get in the team, you ended yeah. up playing pretty much week in, week out for Mansfield. Sum up that sum up sum up that first season. Um, there was a lot of ups and downs to be fair because I actually got sent off three times that season. Yeah. And before that season, I only had three three sending offs in my whole career, so it was a bit of a okay. This this isn't normal, but luckily the gaffer stuck with me and he put me in pretty much every game I was available for. So I'm very grateful for that and I like to think that I repaid him on the pitch. Yeah, and then, of course, following season, finishing 12th, you're actually named player of the season by the club. I mean, that must have been a real proud moment for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, personally, that's something I try to aim for every season to try and obviously be at least a nominee. And 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 obviously, if I can win it, that means I've, I've done my part to help the team because ultimately that's what it's about. It's about winning games and helping the team any way you can. So if, if, if you're player of the season, obviously, you've you've done what you've set out to achieve so yeah I was definitely pleased with that and then of course the following summer Steve Evans as manager re- revamps the squad I mean I mean a man that's you know very well known among the EFL uh where, where does he rank among among the the managers you worked under yeah he's, he's definitely he's definitely up there obviously we we had like when he first came in like like he does at most clubs he brings in a lot of players <laughs> um so I think he brought in Two centre backs straight away. Um, I think first season, I think he brought in sixteen players. I think it was. Wow. So, yeah. Ultimately, I knew if I wanted to be here, I'm gonna have to obviously perform when I get a chance, and obviously work hard in training, and and obviously get any get in his good books. So, initially, I think the first few games I started on the bench. Um, then. I think I got a start and did well. I think the team won. And then I kind of worked my way into his good books and stayed there, luckily enough. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, yeah, being like being obviously a Gills fan um, and, and speaking to a, a lot of players, they say away from the pitch, he's like, he's a lovely, lovely guy. The moment he gets on a touchline, he's a yeah. completely different animal. Is that, is, is that what he was like? Like away from the pitch, he was... He was always dressing remote, like dressing door open and things like that, and he had an open door policy. Or yeah, he was he was definitely someone that he, he, you could you could have a conversation with, no problem. Is is a bit is a bit like Martin Allen in, in terms of there's a method to the madness of what he does. So like even though you see him on the, on the sideline screaming and shouting, he might he might look back at the bench and give you a cheeky wink and you'd be like, oh okay, you did that on purpose. <laughs> so is 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 definitely a character, but. He's someone that obviously I, I got on well with and had some good times with. Yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure his assistant must have been Paul Rayner at, at Mansfield. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
how how was Paul as well? Because so he does a lot of the coaching, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. So basically, he he's he's the day to day guy and obviously runs all the sessions and and obviously structures the team around obviously what the gaffer wants. So yeah, they they work well together and and I I enjoyed working with both of them. To be fair, any crazy stories from them too? I'm sure you've got plenty. <laughs> um, I'm I'm not sure I've got any that I can actually share. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, you'd have to come back to me on that one. I'll get back to yeah. you on one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe off air. <laughs> off air, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously Steve left the, St- Steve left in March for, for, for Peterborough in the time and he left he left Mansfield in the automatic places, didn't he? Was it was it frustrating at the time that that you were doing so well, you were looking really, really, really uh, looking at getting promotion and and, and the gaffer went, went up and left? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it kind of, it kind of was. I think it was second at the time, and then yeah, obviously the the Peterborough manager got sacked, and we all knew that he lived in Peterborough, and it's kind of one that he's, he he would he would jump at the chance to go to, um, but we wasn't kind of we kind of fifty fifty whether he's gonna go on that because like I said, we was doing well, it was a good season, um, and was it the right time for him to go there? Or them kind of questions were getting asked, and then. Out of the blue, just kind of, kind of said, "Yeah, I'm leaving." And then, oh, what did he just come in and sit, sit, sit everyone down and just say, "Look, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going." But at first, he he said he he wasn't going to Peterborough. He was he had another job lined up somewhere else abroad, which is why he was going. And then he got a call apparently, and then did a U-turn and went to Peterborough. Wow. So yeah, so obviously the lads were disappointed. Obviously, I was disappointed. Um, but we still we still had had high hopes of finishing off the season strong and getting promoted. Um, obviously, Flickcraft came in, and obviously we didn't hit the ground running. It took a bit of a bit of time to get things right, and I think ultimately we dropped out the the playoffs. Um, I think finished eighth, and then obviously had to kind of reassess and regroup in the summer. And then we started we started off that season very well and and ultimately should have should have went up and got promoted but yeah missed you that ended up thing. you ended up getting named in the in the league two PFA league two league two team of yeah. the year I mean that probably says a lot that like you you missed out on prom- you missed out on the on on the final being beaten by uh, Newport but you you were named as one of the league two player of the year that must have been Kind of a bit of sweet, really, wasn't it? Is it obviously individual mm. for you, but ultimately, like you've just said, you, you probably should have gone and got promoted that year. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, that's that's one of the the high, highlights of my career. Obviously, getting into that that uh, team of the year, and also got in the EFL team of the year with yeah. obviously the the mixed one where you have the championship, League One and League Two. One I got in that one as well, which wow, which, which was obviously a big deal for me. Um, but yeah, like going into to the last game of the season, we, all we needed was a draw against MK Duns. But it was basically a cup finder because it was also MK Duns that would go up automatic. Wow. So we lost one nil, and obviously had to to drop into the playoffs. And it's always a difficult ask to to then flip the mindset from yeah we should be promoted to okay now we need to we got three more games potentially. Do you think that just do you, do you think that just killed any sort of momentum that you might have had, Christian? Yeah, definitely. I think ultimately that's that's mentally how much it drains from you being at that that point to then dropping out out by a goal basically. So keep a clean sheet after we've done I think nineteen clean sheets that season. Yeah. So we had one more clean sheet, we would we'd have got promoted. If we had equalised, we have got promoted. But ultimately, that's football. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Graham Coogan eventually comes in at, at Mansfield, and and you you were released under him. Was was that a, a frustrating way to end your time at a club which obviously served you so well? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I spent five five good years there and enjoyed every single one of them. Um, obviously, it was a similar situation to to the Keith Curl at Nuts County. He obviously came in and, and didn't really 
didn't really take to me for whatever reason and obviously wanted me at the club. So obviously the same with Graham when he came in. He wasn't really having me when he first came in and tried to get rid of me in January because he came in November, I believe, maybe December. And then January tried to get rid of me and then kept me after I, I came back into the team and then played well. And then he, he kept me in the team till, till obviously COVID hit. And that's, that's why it was a bit of a strange one because I was playing week in, week out. And then he was he was raving about me to the, to the squad and saying how, how well I'd done in previous games, etc. And then COVID happened and then I didn't really hear from him too much. And then we had the one-to-one -one meeting and then he was like, I'm going to go in a different direction and let you go. So it was a bit of a surprise in that sense. And obviously it's not the ending that I wanted after obviously building up a, a good rapport with the fans and, and obviously being there for five years and playing over 200 games, majority of them as captain as well. So yeah, it was, it was, a, it was definitely a disappointing end to, to a good year.